What's going on, guys? It's your boy, John, the Liquidator, coming back with another video. So, look like Cheryl Miller's going viral for saying this about Kayla Clark and DJ Curtis' relationship with Nalaja Smith has been a major part of Fever Locker Room drama. Guys, for this one here, we got to go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> by now, Kayla Clark is set to be named Rookie of the Year for the 2024 season. And one thing that is kind of off about all this is none of the big media is really picking up on it. Nobody's really talking about it, bruh. Hell, the WNBA haven't even tweeted about it. And this is crazy because before news broke about Asia Wilson getting MVP, he was saying WNBA react to it. He was saying different people around the league just react to it. But when it's dealing with Kayla Clark... Ain't nobody said nothing, bruh. It's almost like people don't even care that Kayla Clark just won Rookie of the Year. This league is unbelievable. They've been hating on Kayla Clark ever since she got here, bruh. She came in breaking all the records, letting it be known. She was coming down to break down barriers. And that's exactly what she's been doing. Well, one person that's truly been on her side is none other than WNBA legend Cheryl Miller. Well, an old conversation that she had in an interview about Kayla Clark resurfaced. And this is what she had to say. Let's roll the footage right now. Yeah can be so um, so shedding of some of that weight, some of that volume. Um, right. And I just, I, I, I gave her the biggest hug that I could. And when she saw me, she was like, oh man, finally somebody, <laughs> somebody <laughs> I see that's on my side. Right, they can relate. She was getting hit with everything left and right. And I just said, um, I hugged her, I said, I'm so proud of you. Um, I go, save her this. Um, use this as a, as a formula. I said, but keep being you. I said, no matter what, keep being you, you know, and then, and then she thanked me and then I bounced. Um, and what I've, what I'm trying to, and, and Annie did this for me and I didn't understand it at the time. Nancy, um, imparted her wisdom. I didn't understand it. I accepted it, but I didn't understand it. Now I do. Now I get it. I can't imagine, Kevin Ray, what these kids are dealing with, with the social media right. and the attention. I, I don't know if I would have been able to handle it. Seriously. You know, I was too much of a temperamental human being to be able to handle this right. type of business. What Cheryl Miller speaking about Kayla Clark. And now that footage is currently going viral. Shout out to Cheryl Miller, man. She's been a true advocate for Kayla this whole time. Moving on to another story. That is DJ Nate Carrington, everybody's favorite son player. I'm saying that in a joking way, dog. Now, we know her relationship with Nalaja Smith has been a topic of discussion pretty much this whole season, dog. Well, it looked like some old tweets is currently going viral, dealing with her going off on fans in regards to her relationship with Nalaja Smith and even calling out Aaliyah Boston. Now, a lot of this drama was occurring with DJ A. Carrington and the Fever Locker Room way before Kayla Clark even got there, dog. Now, them trying to say Kayla Clark fans is doing all of this. Now, Aja Smith and DJ A. Carrington is the drama of the locker room. And that's why Nigel Aja Smith need to get on. I feel like they need to get rid of her, send her somewhere else, let her and DJ A. Carrington relationship be locker room drama with a whole other team. But let's check out these tweets right now. Now, these tweets is from July 2nd, 2023. One fan wrote, I understand you wanted to defend your girlfriend, but you are completely missing the point. This is about the shady things that her family has co-signed about her own teammate. DJ Nate Curtis stated, I've been quiet on this. I got my own team to focus on, but I'm also not going to continue to idly scroll when I see how y'all hate is affecting her the way y'all or on here, ishing on her, Dalasia, when you haven't seen her or heard from her. So it looked like she's currently arguing with WNBA fans over Dalasia Smith, which is crazy to me because these are Fever fans, bruh. And from what I read, 
in some of these tweets. The argument was currently about Aaliyah Boston, bruh. Now, what's crazy about all of this is from what I'm picking up on is that she's been the cause of locker room drama for quite some time. And that could be part of the reason why Nalaysia Smith don't really get a lot of PT. That is because of her relationship with who? DJ A. Carrington, bruh. She is becoming a locker room cancer. With all that being said, moving on to another story. This is Aaliyah Boston speaking on racial injustice. Pretty much hate throughout the WNBA. Let's roll the footage. Hi, I was wondering your thoughts on the Alyssa Thomas comments and if you've witnessed any of that firsthand inside Gamebridge. Um, yeah, I mean, AT's comments were... It's hard to hear, but it's also the the truth in some way. I mean, I wouldn't put everything on Fever fans, um, but I mean, just overall on social media, I mean, there has been so much hate spread. And even being on this team, like to start the season, I was at the other end of those hate comments. I was at the other end of every single thing that's to come. They say they support the fever and everything like that. But, I mean, they just said everything under the earth, and it wasn't nice. And I feel like that was a big reason as to why I took a break from social media. And at the same time, it's like now that the tables have turned and we started winning games and we had – and we and I started doing better in their opinion, and then all of a sudden it was like love comments and, oh, my gosh, you're doing amazing. And, honestly, it's, it's hard as a player – because every single night we come out here, we're not performing for what you guys think. We are coming out here to do the best that we can to compete every single night. But And, you know, it's kind of hard, but that's why for us it's about focusing about the 12 in the locker room. It's about focusing what's important there, keeping those priorities straight. Because if you worry about every single thing that happens on the outside, it's kind of hard to win games, and that's exactly what we want to do. But a big part of it, too, is the storylines that come out. Like, I feel like the media plays a big role in what other people think, whether they watch the game or not. Sometimes people aren't even watching the games. They're just looking at storylines, headlines that come out, and they're running off of that. And it's easy to attach yourself to the fever because we have a lot of attention around us right now. And it's so easy to say, well, I'm a fever fan. I'm an AB fan. I'm a Caitlin fan. And just dispute hate off of that. And that's never okay. I feel like no matter who you are, what team you play for like that should never be the case Yo, Scott. young ab is only two years in the league mm -hmm. caitlin's months in the lead it's not even a year yet it's only she only months in the lead so i think with time it only is going to get better um and as you saw with time after the break it got better so um the future is very bright for those two we go dana then we go scott on the left uh, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on Alyssa Thomas's comments and if you've seen any of that firsthand. No, what was the comments? Oh, Alyssa Thomas came out and said that the Fever fan base was racist. I mean, we can't control what yeah, someone else says. Like, yes. for the more, like, hmm. I think that for us, we, we err on the side of professionalism in a lot of different ways, and we can only control what's in our organization, within, within our people. Um, and that, I mean, me personally, we don't condone those kind of things. No, you know, what, no matter what color you are or whatever you carry or possess, I think for us, we focus on the basketball part. Um, and I think that she may have had an experience that we may or may not know on her own. Um, but I don't think that, you know, that should be labeled on us 12 or our you know, who we try to represent for ourselves. And so, you know, I respect her comment and what she has to say, but I don't think it has anything to do with us, you know. Yeah, and also to piggyback on that, like we don't condone any of those things. At like all. At all. For the more you know, I's been on us from since C got drafted. So for us, our ears been blocked out longer than most people, yeah. if that make any sense. So like I've said a comment before, like it's a lot of things that try to come in this building and to pull us apart that we just didn't let. However, we probably got it too. We just didn't, don't care about it because what's important is this organization and us winning games, and that's what we did. So, but for the most part, we don't condone that. I don't care about it because it's, like, <laughs> it's a fan who probably sitting on the couch doing nothing, so I don't care. <laughs> we'll go, Scott, then we'll go. Why they kept Caitlin Clark off the Olympic team. Oh, we just don't want to deal with her fans. And, and all of that that would come along with Caitlin Clark. We must continue to downplay and mistreat Caitlin Clark because her fans are so toxic and Alyssa Thomas just can't deal with it when she goes to work. Cut it out. Delete the app.
quit coming up with these excuses to hate Caitlyn Clark, to abuse Caitlyn Clark. You want to talk about racism? Go read DeJone Carrington, your teammate's Twitter feed. She hates white people, and she makes it real clear over her social media. Start there. Instead of preaching at and wagging a finger at fans over social media, turn to your teammate and say, hey, cut it out. But that's not what she's going to do or anybody's going to do. They're all going to, oh, it's Caitlin Clark. It's her fans. It's her fault. It's Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin's just this burden for the league. We don't want those types of fans. We don't want to have to deal with what everybody else has to deal with over Twitter. We're special. We're tall women who occasionally make layups. That makes us special, and we deserve a special level of treatment. I told you I got mixed emotions about the end of this WNBA season. They're mixed because I don't have Caitlin Clark and that team to watch anymore, but I'm excited that the season has ended so that Alyssa Thomas and all these other whiny victims. That was Jason Whitlock, Aaliyah Boston, and her teammates speaking about the racial injustice of the WNBA. But guys, I want you to get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this video. Keep them bills on because you know what? I'm going to bring you the news like always, man. Shake the haters off. I'm out of here. Peace out. Shake the haters off.